Okay, everyone, welcome to smarthelping.com. We are doing a full upgrade to the open pit mining financial model. This is the overview video. And what I'll do is go through each tab, explain all the inputs and what you should see on the outputs. In general, you'll have revenue assumptions, cost assumptions, capex, startup costs, um, and then it'll output income statement annual, balance sheet annual, cash flow statement annual, and annual detail, executive summary distributions, returns, visuals. There's also some data here in equipment and buildings, just informative data, as well as some sources um, for mining all the way over here in the README. So uh, to use the template, you're going to only adjust cells in light yellow with blue text. You can start by putting in the company name, the launch year. This will drive the dates of the forecast. The end year, you could pick any year up to um, 50 years out. And whenever you um, hit the the end year, all operations will stop and reports will update automatically. You can choose to include the terminal value or not. So if you want to try to say there's some residual value at exit, you can hit yes here and then put the multiple of EBITDA that you think that will be valued at. Exit value that will flow through. If you don't want to include this, you just hit no and then it will not be included, it'll just show operations over time. Cash sources, you've got debt, um, this traditional P&I loan, if you put in anything here, it'll show in the amortization and cash flow accordingly. If you do select terminal value, yes here, so an exit proceed, then this any money left on this loan will be paid back on that in that year. You've also got remaining equity needed. So if you, you fund some with financing, um, this shows if there's any left um, by basically required by investors. And that could be from owners, operators, as well as any LPs, investors. And that's just based on the total startup costs and any net burn of operations expected based on the forecast. Uh, and then you can go over here on the cap table and define um, up to 20 slots for outside investors and inside investors their investment and this last slot here in row 30 will always um, default to any remaining equity that's not been populated anywhere else in the schedule you can also define the share of common stock and if there's any a class a and b shares you can define that you'll get a fully diluted share percentage for each entity here and then you got distributions over to the right all the way out and internal rate of returns accordingly Getting back to the global control. So this is going to display the investor equity and owner equity is actually going to display right from the cap table. You can also define interest rates here. Um, income tax rate is just going to be a percentage of um, regular net income. Long-term capital gains is going to be if you define anything on the terminal value here under 100%, then that will go into fixed assets and any gain or loss or well, any gain will be taxed at a, a lower rate so that kind of splits up your terminal value into two tax buckets if you don't want to worry about that just zero them out and no taxes will populate the big tab is mine and ore so this is where you're defining how much revenue you're possibly going to generate from the mine you can define your ore production up here in tons uh, then that will flow down you can define of the tons you expect to mine, what percentage are going to be made up of these different metals, coal, these gems, limestone, rock salt, gravel, clay. So you can define percentages for whatever makes sense for your mine, the breakdown of it. And then we've got a value per ton here, which you can derive from, you know, some of these have a value per kilo per ounce. You have to update those based on the values of what, whenever you're doing this forecast and um, based on the percentage per ton, you get a value per ton, and then you get a, a actual expected value per day based on these percentages. So here we're saying we're just mining 57% iron, 10% quartz, 10% limestone, 11, 3% diamond stone, some gravel, some clay. So th those resulting values per day populate here. And that will go and flow over to your annual detail at the top. Note, you can define a percentage of this value achieved each year. So this could be accounting for capacity, partial year start. Um, also, you can go over 100% if you think you'll be able to expand or if there's some curve of um, 
the percentage of expected maximum that you achieve over time. You can define that with these percentages. Then we've got costs. So these are just operating costs. You can define, um, you know, diesel, electricity, different uh, primers, drill bits, debt cord. Uh, if you also have other things, you can combine these um, into some annual cost and then group them and put some other costs here. If you have like ongoing equipment rental, uh, building rental, anything you're renting, um, would you want to fit into here and have the annual cost spit out. Uh, so you can adjust these accordingly to fit uh, your different needs. You've also got wages. So these are um, hourly personnel. You've also got salaried personnel. You can update these accordingly. Again, my numbers are arbitrary. You'd put in what makes sense for your situation. We also got the hourly breakdown here for um, how many hours a shift lasts, how many shifts there are per day, active days per year. Um, CapEx, this is going to be if you are buying equipment and or building um, or investing in um, things that are depreciable. You can put your cost basis here, useful life, and then the resulting depreciation, cumulative depreciation will all flow through. And that's just really going to be a, a cash flow effect as well as a tax effect um, for depreciation. Cap table we already went over. Startup costs, these are other costs that are tax deductible. If you are doing taxes, then you would only put non depreciable items here or things you could depreciate 100% up front. And this flows to cash flow. Generally, these are often just consulting legal fees. Um, terminal value, I already went over that. That schedule here is the amortization schedule. You can define the term and interest rate, and the rest of the numbers come from elsewhere in the model. And then this you can see is assumed to be paid back if we hit yes on the exit. If we hit no here, you can see this now just runs into perpetuity until it runs out. And then we have our income statement annual. So here's you know revenues, there's no cost of goods sold. We have your operating expenses based on everything I just explained. EBITDA, interest, depreciation, any extraordinary income or net gain or loss from sale of business or sale of assets. And then you got taxable income, income taxes, net income. Now note this net gain or loss is zero because we've assigned all the value to extraordinary income if we were to say 50-50. And go back here and I can see some of that is coming into the uh, CapEx net gain or loss based on that number I just put in. We'll set this back to 100. All right, so this income statement balance sheet just shows you assets. This is going to be cash in your non current any equipment items or depreciable items here. We got accumulated depreciation, total assets, liabilities, just that debt schedule if there is one. Then you got owner's equity, so paid investments and retained earnings. And then you got total owner equity, and then that will always balance um, assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. So that should always be zero down here. And this will automatically change based on how many years you're going to run. You've got the cash flow. So this is a really um, detailed look at um, cash flow that happens from operations, from investing activities, and from financing activities. So it breaks things out into um, generally acceptable line items for financial statement reporting. Um, And then we've got annual detail. This is where, you can, like I said, you can define the percentage of max capacity attained each year. It's got your startup costs, your operating costs, cash outflow, cash flow for the period. You've got cash on cash return. You've got um, a running cash balance. Then we've got I calculations for IRR here, present value. Um, Executive summary is going to be a similar thing. Uh, basically, this is like your income statement, but it's showing income statement and cash flow items all in one spot. So this is fairly useful to, to see this. Um, you've also got some IRR and ROI uh, equity multiple calculations here based on um, the project and then any investors and owners if there's a breakdown. 
distributions is a discount of cash flow analysis again for the project and investors and owners um, you can define the net present value based on the discount rate um, internal rate of return populates and then this is your summary of cash flows um, over time returns tab is just all inputs um, you can change this here and see different um, net present values um, the rest of this is all input or, or reference from other places visualization you got cumulative cash flow opex by supplies and then annual wages let me drag this down a little bit annual wages by type and that's it and then this is just some like general th things that you might need it's like equipment schedule building schedule and then there's also some sources here if you want to check out more so that's all I got for you. If you want to purchase a template, link will be in the description box below. $45 one-time fee. I'm also going to list it on Eloquent Definition Models. Uh, and the index tab will sh show basically an overview of every tab that I just went over. All right, guys. I will see you on the next one. Don't forget to subscribe.